Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to give you a walkthrough of a costume I made for last year's Halloween. This is my Elphaba costume and I had a bunch of footage of making it and creating it and um, for most of it I wasn't recording audio so yeah, the life of a video creator, right? It's alright. <laughs> it's fine. So, I'm going to give you a walkthrough and then, where applicable, I will include clips from the pieces that I filmed before. Let's get started. So, I'm going to start with the hat, which is a very important part of any Elphaba costume. This one is beautiful, and I will tell you right now that I did not make it. Um, all of the things that I can DIY, I am definitely not a haberdasher. So I tried and I failed. So this one I ordered on Etsy and I will leave a link to the shop down below. The only thing I added is this little spider pin clip thing, which I got at a Renaissance festival. But this girl has a website, so I will leave that as well, especially if you like spiders as much as I do. Um, the one thing I will say about this hat is that it fits me very well when I'm not wearing a wig. But, because I don't have brown hair, obviously, I have to wear a wig for this costume. And when I add the wig, it makes this hat very tight. So that's just something to think about when you're buying hats, is that they can be kind of small. So now we'll get to the rest of the costume. The top is a jacket that I ordered on Amazon. Um, I will leave a link to that and I will leave a link to the skirt as well because I also purchased that and then I just kind of souped them up so to speak and made them look how I wanted them to look. So let's see. I added a lot of beading. That's all mine. This little bee is a pin. Um, the eyeballs are just stick on. I got those a long time ago. I kind of just dug through my collection of beads and pins and that kind of thing and made it very random. If you look at the Broadway musical production costume, and I'll include a picture here, you can see that it's very kind of put together haphazardly, which is kind of the idea, right? She's like a little messy, a little crazy at the point in the play where she wears this costume. So I kind of tried to capture some of that. I definitely would have liked to have added more detail, but I ran out of time. So, the other thing I did, these buttons were silver when I got them, I think. And I kind of weathered them and painted them with some gold acrylic paint and some bronze. These buttons I painted black, these kind of studs. And they have weathered, the acrylic has weathered off a little bit, which actually kind of looks cool. I added, of course, some sequins for some sparkle, and I might just add to this as time goes on. And then the biggest thing that I added, and I think that adds the most, are these shoulder pieces. And I'll include some of the clips that I recorded for this with some voiceover right now, so you know how to make them. It's actually quite simple. I cut a strip of fabric about four inches wide. The length will depend on how you want it to fit your jacket. We will be bunching the fabric, so allow a little extra length for that. I drew a scallop pattern along the edge and then cut it out. I did this on all the strips I intended to use except the cheesecloth. I clipped them all together and used a whip stitch along the top edge to attach them together. Then I folded the top edge into an accordion-like shape and ran a thread through the folds. I pulled the accordion back out just a little to the desired level of ruffliness and then tied it off. I trimmed the cheesecloth once I had sewed the ruffle to the coat. All right, welcome back. So that's how I made the shoulder pieces. And then I just affixed them with kind of a whip stitch all around here. And I actually used a curved upholstery needle and that really helped me kind of loop through some of the shoulder padding material that's in this coat. Um, most of the cloth that I used is left over from other costumes, 
The maroon I actually ordered for a Wolverine costume, and when it came, it was not brown. It was maroon. So I had a bunch of that. This is left over from a Gamora costume I made from a friend. It's for a friend. It's kind of like a faux leather pattern, and it's got some structure to it, which is kind of nice because it holds these shoulder pieces out really nicely. And then this is just Halloween cheesecloth that I got at uh, Michael's, or like the Spirit Halloween store. Um, most of the ruffles that I added are just ribbon, and I used kind of the same bunching method that I used on the shoulder pieces. And then, let me pan you down to the skirt. Alright. So, you know, we're down here. Okay. So the skirt, like I said, I purchased and it had the lacing and I really liked the ruffles and I didn't want to hide a lot of that, but I wanted to kind of capture um, the detail that was on her skirt and I didn't want it to look plain, especially next to the jacket. So I would have liked to have added a bunch of ruffles, but I ran out of time. So instead I kind of made these faux wraparound skirts. And they're actually sewn on um, all the way around. So it's just this maroon um, spandexy material and then the cheesecloth. And they're sewn on all the way around the waistband. And then when you get over here, can you turn for me? Thank you. When you get over here, there's actually a zipper on the skirt. So what I did was attach a hook and eye closure right here so that I could unhook this and unzip it in case you need to get out of it or when you need to get out of it or when you need to go to the bathroom, you know. And then I could just hook it back up and it kind of served to hide the zipper a little bit too, which I actually really liked. Um, the other thing I wanna point out on the back, it didn't add a whole lot. Um, I quite liked the lacing that came with the jacket and that also makes this jacket pretty adjustable, which is super nice. So, that's pretty much how the costume went, and of course, the thing that sells this costume the most is the body paint. So, hold on, let me paint you back up. Okay. So the thing that sells this costume the most is the body paint, and this is something, this is advice that I give to people who are just starting cosplay or who want to make a costume really good but don't have a lot of time is to identify the pieces of the costume that really sell it. So for Alphaba, it's a witchy costume and it really doesn't have to be exactly like the Broadway musical or exactly like the Wizard of Oz. It can kind of be anything that's like black and kind of dress like and witchy. The things that really sell it are her hat and the body paint. So that's why I purchased the hat because I was not happy with the way mine were coming out. And for the body paint, I used um, Mehron's Aqua Paint in Amazon Green, and I will include a link down below. On Broadway, I know they use Mac Chroma, yeah, Mac Chroma Cake in Landscape, but I find that Aqua Paint kind of difficult to work with. Um, and it worked out really well, so I'll include some pictures from Halloween. I hope you enjoyed this costume walkthrough of my Elphaba costume. If you would like to see more of this, just let me know in the comments below. If you want to see a get ready with me transformation as I get into various costumes, also let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload more videos. And please give me a thumbs up because it really helps me get my videos out to other people on the internet. See you guys next time. This is Denise, by the way. Shush! I'm filming! She doesn't care. Are you ready? Don't mess this up for me.